Okay, Senator, if you're ready, we're going to start. Um, always be. Great. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us um, for our town hall today with Senator Toby Stavisky. It will air live right now, and we're also going to record it and preserve it on our social media pages for students who may be in class or are essential workers and will need to watch later. Um, so, Senator, thank you so much for joining us. Just to introduce you to some of our students, Senator Stavisky currently serves as the chair of the Higher Education Committee in the Senate. She has been a senator since 1999, and she has used her platform consistently over the last 20 years in the Senate to advocate for all New Yorkers, but in particular for SUNY and CUNY students. SUNY and CUNY are close to the Senator's heart with family members being students, working as professors, faculty members at SUNY and CUNY. And we really appreciate you being our champion Senator in the legislature year after year. So uh, without further ado, Senator, if you'd just like to offer some welcoming remarks, um, anything um, that students should know about your work to combat COVID-19 and, um, and the legislature's work so far, I think that'd be really helpful for students to hear. Well, first of all, thank you, Austin, and everybody associated with the Student Assembly for coming together. Um, let me add to two very important points. Um, uh, number one, uh, I have 15 graduate credits from Queens College and 15 from Hunter. So I, I'm a consumer as well as uh, an advocate. And secondly, um, both I know it's not SUNY, but Queens College and Queensboro Community College are in my district. Um, the Senate uh, and Assembly have announced that they're going to be holding hearings um, to be date to be determined on the effect of the um, COVID uh, nineteen uh, the virus on all aspects of life, not just. Uh, uh, on the uh, students, but on everybody. And I think that's an important uh, uh, issue that we're gonna be taking up. Thank you so much, Senator. Um, so, you know, the state- And, and my, I should add, my son was student government president at Queens College. So I do have a connection. And without uh, uh, higher education, both my father who graduated from the old College of Agriculture at Cornell, which is part a statutory college, uh, and my husband who went to City College, they could never have gone to college. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I, I know that your, your personal experience with SUNY and CUNY definitely economic crisis stemming from the pandemic and New York's rightful response to, um, you know, to shutter schools and businesses. Um, but the consequence of that, that students are very concerned about are the, is the potential for budget cuts. Um, what do you think and how, how much concern do you think students should have about cuts to SUNY being in the pipeline? Very concerned. Very, very concerned. It's the uncertainty also, I think that is a problem. Um, the governor has projected or the DO division of the budget has projected a at least $10 billion uh, shortfall. And so much of this depends upon the relief we get from Albany. We did have the CARES Act um, and half of that money goes to the students uh, and half to the institutions. And all aspects of higher education are covered under the, uh, the CARES Act. But um, uh, yes, they should be very, very concerned because uh, the DOB has announced a roughly or up to $8.2 billion decrease in aid to localities. And at SUNY, the community colleges fall under the aid to localities budget. But I am absolutely convinced that if we don't get the money from, uh, or some money, some more relief in uh, the federal stimulus, there are going to be massive cuts. Uh, and unfortunately, the governor has the power to do this. Uh, and not just the college uh, will suffer, but I think the students will too, because he has the ability to cut the opportunity programs and all of the other programs, including um, uh, TAP, I suppose, although that would be 
I think off the, uh, I hope it's off the table, but uh, I think the message I'm hearing is that nothing is off the table, that anything that he must be done, we will do. And the legislature, um, I know is going to do what we can to to minimize and mitigate some of the cuts. Understood. Um, so yeah, as we kind of navigate this time when there are so many questions, um, in what places do you think student advocacy can be most valuable? Contacting your local members of Congress at conference office, education people. Um, I shouldn't say we, I have, and I know a, a, a Senator Mayor who chairs the education committee together. We've been trying to mitigate some of the uh, cuts. We have to look to Washington. People are saying, don't cut the budget. There are gonna be cuts uh, and it's horrible. And yet, Washington can help us out. Uh, and that's where you should be focusing your efforts on the federal re representatives, people who your own legislators, they're the ones who respond, I think most uh, directly and completely. Absolutely. So, you know, I think we've spoken about some of the ways that um, the pandemic has upended students' lives, you know, economically and what the long-term consequences could be there. But there have also been huge consequences academically as we've tried to transition spur of the moment to a remote learning model. Um, from, you know, from what you've seen and what you've heard from students, families, um, how do you think the transition has been? Um, and do you think that distance learning is likely to become a, a long-term alternative to in-person instruction as a result of what we've learned through the crisis? I certainly hope not. Uh, if you want distance learning, we have Empire State College, uh, which has primarily in the past been for older uh, students. But uh, uh, it does provide flexibility for the students. Distance learning does have that advantage. But there are so many, many disadvantages. And one is the lack of a face-to-face -face meeting interaction with not only the professors, but the other students. Uh, that is lacking when you have distance learning. Um, some areas may not have broadband uh, coverage. They may not have internet access. Uh, there are so many, I think, downsides uh, that face-to-face um, uh, -face learning to me is uh, extremely important. Students in the sciences learning. Um, on the other hand, in the legislature, we passed a, uh, a resolution permitting uh, Zoom conferences and Zoom voting. And uh, that's how the budget was passed. Every legislator was in his or her uh, office and uh, uh, voted through the Zoom uh, uh, app. And Again, I think the lack of face-to-face -face contact is, a, is, I think, a downside, uh, not just for student learning, but also for legislators, because um, debate is an important part of the process, and that is lacking. And in the sense, distance voting is, I think, a disadvantage. On the other hand, what beats every, I was going to say Trump's, but what it, what it beats everything else <laughs> is the fact <laughs> yeah, a fact of safety. And to me, safety is the major concern, and that's why we. Absolutely, Senator. Um, so, what advice do you have for SUNY students who may be struggling a bit to succeed given the academic strain? Uh, and that's accompanied the crisis. Um, what do you think students can do to, um, you know, to, to get through this period um, with their academic success intact? Well, students can, they must participate in the um, distance learning. If they have issues or questions or problems, they should contact 
contact their advisors. Perhaps uh, they can work with uh, your organization with the student association for advice, to the uh, SUNY assembly uh, for advice. Uh, there are are ways, and that's what who may have meant. And um, I know that there's a hotline that's been set up, uh, and that's another avenue that students can pursue. Absolutely. So, you know, I, I think it's also important, you know, to have this conversation. It's important to have this conversation about the crisis. Um, but students, are, you know, are also focused on what comes after. Um, and, you know, we're focused on the larger issues, the larger questions about public higher education. So now that, you know, I guess session is sort of in flux, but we did have the budget. Um, what particular policy ideas or bills um, are, are top of your radar um, that could really benefit students that you think we should mobilize on? Yeah, I, I think the whole subject of distance learning, um, whether it works, how we can improve it, I think that is a major issue for the future because um, uh, it's, the, that's the way, that's the direction we're going uh, for distance learning. And uh, until this pandemic subsides, that's what's going to happen. And I think uh, uh, that should be a topic of discussion. Uh, I'm also concerned, and I've been concerned for a number of years, about student indebtedness and leaving college uh, with debts. Uh, I know that students are getting uh, refunds on uh, room and board and other corona uh, related uh, expenses, but we've got to remember that debt. It's very bad to come out of college owing all that money. I know SUNY and CUNY, particularly uh, uh, public colleges, uh, stu your students come out with less debt than the privates, but this is a problem that concerns me. And lastly, uh, when students graduate they're have, or receive a certificate, as more and more community colleges are doing, they've got to have a job available that relates to the work that they have accomplished. And the issue of certificates and the future of community colleges, I think, should be discussed. Um, and now, particularly the, the community colleges are going to survive uh, because many of them are small. They're, they're in they were already in jeopardy with decreasing enrollment. Uh, and this is true of the privates also. Some of the privates are also having serious problems. And I think the future of small colleges uh, should be discussed. Obviously, uh, we wanna talk about how higher ed is funded um, there are many inequities here, and uh, that's another area. Uh, I did hearings throughout the state, and I thank you for coming to so many of them. Uh, uh, we held hearings at uh, everywhere from the University of Buffalo uh, to um, uh, Oswego's campus at Syrac in Syracuse to New Pulse, and um, we did a Brooklyn College, we were at Nassau Community College, and 250 Broadway last fall, and I thank you for coming to uh, many of them. Uh, uh, I thought they were, I thought the students were to really, uh, they were the superstars. They did such a good job in presenting why we need improvements in higher education, far better than anybody else who testified. Thank you so and much. To, you know, and we sat there and we listened to students describe uh, living in a car, uh, dilapidated classrooms, uh, food insecurity, mental health issues. To me, that really was the bottom line of why we do what we do. It's to help every student, but particularly those in need. Absolutely, Senator. Um, and you know, seeing how seriously you took those concerns really meant a lot to us in the student assembly. And I know in normal times, um, there, you know, we, we, we could have expected um, a, 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 lot, a lot of these um, a lot of issues we spoke about to be addressed in the budget. And we're, we're grateful that you're going to continue to be a champion in future sessions once the immediate crisis passes for, for some of our bigger priorities. 
Um, you brought up community colleges and you know, we, community college finances, uh, especially in light of the current crisis are a big concern um, for, for our students on the 30 SUNY community colleges. Cause you know, they face not only the elimination of the funding floor that was enacted in last year's budget but was removed this year, but potential cuts in state and county support. Um, what can we do to keep the community colleges, you know, viable and healthy so that they can meet the job training and workforce development needs of communities around the state? Yeah, I'm particularly concerned about the community colleges because they are going to, I'm afraid they're going to suffer more than the four-year colleges. Uh, and I think the fact that the, is, the law requires the one-third one third, one third costs be paid by the state, the students and the locality is being ignored more than it's observed. Uh, but it's the community colleges. And I think the way to do it is through economic development. Uh, in some areas of our state, in the rural areas, the community colleges are the largest employer. And I think the governor was absolutely right in focusing on economic development through the Empire State Development Corporation. And you notice he put a lot of community college presidents on those boards. And I think that's where the future of the community colleges lie, in developing industry, in training those jobs, uh, and hopefully we will be able to survive this crisis. Uh, but it's the community colleges that are at the level that um, really needs help. Absolutely. Um, so I guess you know, reflecting on your experience in, in legislature, but also in life, you know, having worked in this higher ed space, but also having been a student, um, how do you think college has changed since you were an undergraduate? And um, what, what changes do you think are positive and which ones are maybe negative? I think they're all positive, uh, but you know, you're starting at a base uh, where uh, subject matter's the same. Uh, how it's done is different, totally different. When I was in college, uh, if I had to write a term paper, I'd go to the library, look in the uh, card file, the catalog to see what books, uh, put in a request uh, and they bring me the book or let me go to the stacks. Now you just get on, and I took notes uh, on little index cards. We all were supposed to do, I didn't do it all the time, but for big pay term papers, yeah, you wrote, you took notes, uh, you had to write neatly uh, on index cards. And um, uh, now, obviously, we're using computers. Um, I typed, uh, I don't know if you know what a typewriter is, but that's what we used. Uh, we didn't have, we had, duplicating machines, but they were very primitive and expensive. So we used something called carbon paper to make copies of our papers. Times have changed, um, but I think it's all been good. Uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, the subjects stay, stay the same. There's only, I started as a math major. Um, then I was put into a seminar, an honor seminar at Syracuse. And, and since it was called citizenship, it was more like the philosophy of government. And uh, uh, that's when I switched my major to history. Uh, so the facts are the same, but the way it's done mechanically is, is very, very different. Do you have a favorite memory from college that you'd like to share with students? <laughs> a lot of favorite memories. Uh, uh, being introduced to such a variety of, I think, was really the first uh, uh, memory I have of calculus when, um, um, but I worked on the campus newspaper and uh, we, my junior year, we all became junior editors, there were five of us, and uh, uh, I have great memories of uh, being the night editor we took turns uh, on the campus and it was a good a good newspaper it was a daily newspaper and uh, uh, I have great memories of uh, I belonged to a sorority and lived in the house and 
uh, I have great memories of that. So yes, I have happy memories in our and uh, I didn't know it, but uh, they arranged a campus to do several times since. Uh, campus has changed, but they still have the original buildings, and it's a, uh, an amalgam of both the old and the new, and that's really what we should be doing. And tuition, I must tell you, was a lot less. And we had full-time faculty, and I think that's important. Uh, classes were smaller than they are today. Uh, the seminars had 10, 15 people. Regular classes had 30 to 40 people. You had not very many adjuncts, and that is uh, a bad trend, I think. What do you think we can do to start reversing that trend? Just get out of this crisis right now, um, survive, and then I think we've got to look to the future, and it's not too early to start planning. Um, uh, we're not gonna always be in this terrible situation. Things are gonna get better, and uh, we've got to plan for the future. I think that uh, uh, students, obviously, but faculty and administrators, I think the whole community, legislators, uh, have to work together to plan for a sensible transition to a combination of perhaps distance learning, but also uh, improvements to our infrastructure. Some of these classrooms are crumbling, buildings are crumbling. Uh, we need an influx of funding. And once we get on, a, on an even keel in terms of uh, the fiscal situation, the economy, we've got to start improving the state's contribution for higher education. It's been flat for so many years, and that is a trend that has to change. Great. Thank you, Senator. So I guess to conclude, um, what, what's giving you hope in this crisis? What, what have you seen from your constituents, from friends, from family, um, even, even just from, you know, from the general public that gives you reason for hope and should give students reason for hope? Students give me reason for hope. You guys do. Uh, you have the future. Uh, I see people helping one another uh, in so many different ways. Uh, and I think that is what makes it each day better. It's the little victories that really mean a great deal. And we're just going to keep going until we get uh, to back to whatever the new normalcy is going to be. But it's the, it, the people and how they've come together. And at 7 p.m., you hear the noise and you hear the singing, uh, loudspeakers uh, where I live. And I think that's what keeps us going. The appreciation uh, for the providers uh, and the fact that when you see patients leaving hospitals on TV and the staff is all out there clapping, that's what gives, I think, them hope and it's what gives us hope. Well, thank you so much for those words, Senator, for your leadership, um, for championing our cause. Um, is there a place students can go if they're interested in an internship or any sort of follow-up with you? My uh, Senate website, uh, my email, it's um, Stavisky. I, mean, I never remember it because I never email myself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Stavisky um, at New York Senate, I think. I don't know, Mr. Google helps me on these things. Uh, my, my Senate, we, we check the Senate uh, emails every day, several times a day. My staff is diligently, we've had hundreds of unparents inquiries, lots of other inquiries in terms of higher ed, and they can email me at my Senate uh, email. Great, and I and just, as a personal testimonial, it's okay for me to share this, Senator. Um, on Rosh Hashanah in the fall, I sent, <laughs> I, I, I sent Senator Stavisky just a, 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 you know, a simple joking, happy of course, message, of course. Uh, not, not expecting to hear anything back, just so that the sentiment was expressed. Um, and the Senator went out of her way, not just to respond, but to call me and make sure that I was wished a, a happy new year too. And you know, that personal interest really meant a lot to me, Senator. So thank you for that. 
And thank you for all the things you do like that thank for students. Thank you very much. And in fact, Austin, when I was named chair of the higher ed committee, what was, who were the first people I met with? Austin Cuny was us. Yep. It was the students from a separate yep. meetings, but from CUNY and from, and you. You came to my district office uh, and we met. And, and, and ever since that day, it's been such a good relationship. So, Senator, you know, students send best wishes to you and your family, your staff, um, to stay healthy and well and keep up the Thank fight. You. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you very much. much. And wait, wash your hands and wear gloves and mask. <laughs> <laughs> Will do, Senator. Take care. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.